Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, and to you all our Savior, all the and from the of our Lord
without thee we are not able to please thee. Mercifully grant that thy Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule our hearts through Jesus Christ our Lord. A reading from the Epistle of St. Paul to the Ephesians. This I say and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk, not as other Gentiles walk, in the vanity of their mind, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart, who, being past feeling, have given themselves over unto lasciviousness, to work all uncleanness with greediness. But ye have not so learned Christ. If so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that ye put off as concerning your former manner of life the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind, that ye put on a new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Wherefore, putting away lying, Speak every man truth with his neighbour, for we are members one of another. Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath, neither give place to the devil. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labour, working with his hands the thing which is good, that he may have to give him that needeth. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, in whom you were sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. This is the word of the Lord.
be with you. Continuation of the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory. But Jesus entered into a ship and passed over and came to his own city, and behold, they brought to him a man sick of the palsy, lying on a bed. And Jesus, seeing their faith, said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, be of good cheer, thy sins be forgiven thee. And behold, certain of the Pharisees said within themselves, This man blasphemer. And Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, Wherefore think ye evil in your hearts? For whether it is easy to say, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Arise and walk, but that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins. Then said he to the sick of the palsy, Arise, take up thy bed, and go into thine house. And he arose and departed to his house. And when the multitude saw it, they marveled and glorified God, who had given such power unto men. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I think it's important that I put this sermon into context in the light of the readings, in the epistle readings. For when I began to write it, I had the spirituality of Sarum of Mordor. And as I wrote it, I worked my way through that anger having discovered that half my possessions have disappeared. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind that he may put on the new man which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Things are not as they seem. Humanity is not simply cast without hope into the rushing torrent of time. We have an acute awareness of the past, the present, and the future. <coughs> In a spiritual sense, man is able to come to a halt and stand still and look back on his past, on his presence, present, or on his future. His existence is more than a relentless forward search and urge. What has already come about is spiritually transformed in our human lives. For we carry our past, our own past on with us into the future. And it is in the present and the present circumstances that we deal with our relationship with God as well. But this carrying forward of the past and the present does not take place automatically. We have to decide what we will carry forward within ourselves in order that he put off as concerning your former manner of life, the old man, which is corrupt 
and that he put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. But let us take heart, for we are told ye have received not the spirit of bondage again to fear, but he received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. This for me is a miraculous vision of a God who can still do something with appallingly uncompromising material. This is what almightiness looks like in practice. Not the little stuff the world believes in. It's the unlimited power to be there, to be faithful to and for a world that is deeply unstable and unjust and suspicious and uncooperative. The power to go on trying to get through at all costs, laboring and wrestling with our human hearts, which we know can be dangerous spaces. This is our God, the Servant King, Abba, Father. This is why trust, belief in God the Father Almighty is so different from wish fulfillment and projection about some all-powerful character who can get what he wants straight away and demands it. God is to be trusted as we would trust a loving parent whose commitment to us is inexhaustible, whose purposes for us are unfailingly generous, someone whose life is the source of our life and who guarantees that there is always a home for us. And this has nothing whatsoever to do with a Freudian projection unto God, fantasies of an all-powerful father or idealized doting mother always accepting and soothing. None of those are healthy. What we must grasp is the idea of a God whose power is made clear in his patience and his capacity always to bring something fresh into a situation, something healing. That is power. It is little wonder that the execution of Jesus could seem to the first Christians not a defeat, but a decisive moment of divine power. Behold, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on an ass, and on a colt, the foal of an ass. But of course, all of this brings with it an incredible responsibility. The call to reflect our redeeming from the bondage to fear, to a world entrapped and enwrapped in a massive bondage to fear. Easier said than done, but it has and can be real, often in the midst of the most fearful, dark and satanic contexts, even in my own little world yesterday and often quite spectacularly against all odds. Etty Hillesum was a young Jewish woman in her 20s when the Germans occupied Holland, who published diaries from 1941 to 1943 show how during this terrible period in the history of her country and her people, she became more and more conscious of God's hand on her life. And at a time when most would have been unlikely to feel more deeply skeptical about God's presence. She did the opposite. 
imprisoned in the transit camp at Westerbork before being shipped off to Auschwitz, where she was to die in the gas chambers in November 1943. At the age of 29, she wrote, there must be someone to live through all this and bear witness to the fact that God lived, even in these times. And why should I not be that witness? In a letter to a friend from Westerbork, she described her life as having become an uninterrupted dialogue with you, O oh God. And she could write of seeing her vocation in the camp as being not simply to proclaim you, God, to commend you to the hearts of others, one must also clear the path toward heaven in them. I love what we just sang. Bearing the lamp of grace and in earth's darkest place, let there be light. There's a lovely psychological sensitivity at the end of the parable of the prodigal son. St. Luke writes, with such exquisite sensitivity. The elder son's anger, always going on about the younger son, the elder son's anger is expressed by the refusal to go in. Little tantrum. The father's love is expressed by his coming out also to meet this older brother. We miss that sometimes. There is room in God's heart for us all. The extravagant gestures of acceptance, road, ring, fatted calf, feast, these are all initiated by the father before the prodigal son has time to complete his speech. Says the father, it doesn't matter. The elder son is alienated himself even though he has never left home. But the Father's language is never bitter. God is always the initiator. In utter darkness, as we have seen and heard, and in spaces of great light. The extravagant, exquisite, recklessness of God's love is poured out and it is ours. We need only come home to receive it. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. <coughs>
us pray for the whole state of Christ's church and for all according to their needs. Almighty God, who has taught us to pray for all men and has promised to hear the prayers of those who ask in faith, <coughs> we beseech you to look mercifully upon thy universal church and to inspire it with the spirit of truth, unity and concord. We pray especially for the work of the church in this diocese and today we give thanks for the visit of his great Archbishop. <coughs> Lord, in thy mercy. We pray for the needs of those who live in this place and worship in this church, and especially we give thanks to Almighty God for enabling us to celebrate our patronal festival in such splendid style last week, and for drawing so many to the High Mass. <coughs> Lord, in thy mercy. Yeah. We pray for a right stewardship of the world that thou hast created. We pray for the nations of the world and for their leaders that they may minister justice for the maintenance of righteousness and peace. We pray for the victims of the floods in the southern states of the USA, Nepal, and Europe. We pray particularly for families who have lost loved ones and their homes. We pray for peace and good sense to prevail in the face of the horrors occurring in Sudan, in Ukraine, and in the Middle East. We pray for those elected to public office, both in our own land and throughout our continent, as we say, God bless Africa, guard her children, guide her leaders, and give her peace. For Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. We beseech you to bless both those whom we love and those for whom we are bound to pray. Lord, in thy mercy, we beseech of thy goodness to send thy healing grace to all who suffer in body or in soul. We pray for Leah Tutu, Matthew Hickmont, Lucy Murgas, Lisa McBride, Chris Wolnu, Patrick and Ray Wilton, Timothy McBride, Russell Erasmus, Ed and Eileen Jenkins, Avis van der Horn, Susan Freysen, Peter and Barbara Gwenossis, Valerie Atkinson, Sheila van Rienen, Tim Day, Urs Schwartz, James van Sale, Jacqueline de Villiers, Len Berg, Donovan Hinden, Arlene Duff, Sonia Kirsten, Sophia Kida, Ursula Fraser, Bunny Stokel, Sean Kierman, Martin Dyers and John Hofmeister. Lord, in thy mercy, we commend to thy gracious keeping all those who have died in faith. Especially, we pray for those whose years mind occur this week. Ellen Holm, Hinton Yarbuck, John Pfizer, John Riley, Edward Phillips, Thelma Lappets, Mr. Ward, John Wallace, Herbert Lazar, Frederick Finley, priest, James Knipe, Oret Gillamy, Sarah Royce, Ariel de Schmidt, Jamie Nicholson, Barbara Lawrence, David Binns, priest and former rector, and Mary Teresa Everett. Rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord, Amen. and let light perpetual shine upon them. As we, <coughs> we pray for those who will die in our city today, especially those who will die alone and unloved. Lord, in thy mercy. Yeah. As we join our prayers with the unending intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary and of all thy saints, we pray that we may be partakers with them of thy heavenly kingdom. Hail Mary. In the Full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed be the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Merciful Father, grant these our prayers for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. To prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. We confess to God Almighty the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed through our own grievous fault. Wherefore, we pray God to have mercy upon us. Almighty God, who gives all who truly repent, have mercy on you, pardon your sins, and set you free from them. 
confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and bring you unto everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
It is very meet, right and our bounden duty, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God, who with thine only begotten Son and the Holy Ghost art one God, one Lord, in trinity of persons and in unity of substance, who has created all things through thy eternal word, Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, thanksgiving be to thee, almighty God, our heavenly Father, for that thou of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who, by his one oblation of himself once offered, made a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and at institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we, receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me.
Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which he shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as he shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, do render unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And, looking for his coming again with power and great glory, we offer here unto thy divine majesty this holy bread of eternal life, this cup of everlasting salvation. And we humbly beseech thee to pour thy Holy Spirit upon us as upon these thy gifts, that all we who are partakers of this Holy Communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son and be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. And we entirely desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we in all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we often present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee. And although we be unworthy through our manifold sins, to offer unto thee any sacrifice. Yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ our Lord. By whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. As our Saviour Jesus Christ hath commanded and taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth, as it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever.
assume to come to us, thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, that in thy manifold and great mercies we are not raised to the crumbs under thy table. But thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, Lord, Lord when we see him, I said a word, thou shalt kill him.
give thanks unto the Lord, for he is gracious. Favor, most holy Trinity, on this our act of worship and service, and may this sacrifice set forth before thine eyes be acceptable to thy divine majesty, and avail for us and all for whom we have offered it, who livest and reignest, one God, world without end. Angel. 